are shortly after the discussion connected with uh, um, Eastern Bloc Songs um, exhibition. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, we talked uh, about um, a lot of subjects um, and uh, the discussion was very fruitful. Um, but I want to just uh, ask you three questions for our um, internet um, viewers. So at first, uh, maybe you can tell uh, us um, how your uh, studies, uh, your researches are connected with the whole exhibition context. So uh, I'm a curator sometimes, and in the last few years I've made exhibitions which have a relationship to this subject. Mm -hmm. uh, they explore music in Eastern Europe. Um, the first exhibition um, was called Sounding the Body Electric and was really about the, the sort of history of electronic music and experimental music in the 60s and 70s. And then more recently, I made an exhibition with a colleague called Daniel Musager, which is called Notes from the Underground. And it's somehow the, um, the obverse, it's the opposite mm -hmm. of the material that we see here in Centrana because it's to explore the kind of underground cultures which set themselves often apart from what we see here, which is often really the kind of pop main, mainstream of, of the Eastern mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So how, you, from your perspective, you can um, look at uh, the approach uh, of Wayne Burroughs? Okay, so Wayne's an enthusiast. Mm -hmm. He loves this material. And uh, I think there's lots to love here in this material because it's very vivacious. There's a lot of material that relates to album sleeves, mm -hmm. so we see really not just uh, the sort of profiles of pop stars, but we also see the quality of a lot of the graphic design from the 1960s. And if anybody knows the history of the Polish poster, what's interesting here is that many of those famous Polish poster artists, like Fleeshack and Czeskiewicz, they're also designing album sleeves and covers. And so Eastern Europe is very often associated with a kind Grayness in the 1960s seems like a tough time, but actually, it's a kind of pop explosion here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, maybe the last question uh, how we should um, or how we can um, look at those, uh, the, those materials um, after 50 years, um, and, like, uh, and uh, after 50 years um, after the Prague Spring and um, almost 30 years after the communism. Hmm. So I think this material has some kind of surprises. Uh, if you're a, a British viewer and you're really well versed in the history of pop music mm -hmm. in the UK, you're going to know a story about the Beatles mm -hmm. and the Kings and so on. And what's quite striking is that a lot of the material here is almost step in step with what you'd see in the West. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a kind of lively animated culture that we didn't know about. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a chance to think about that. And then I think there's a kind of question about the status of this material, because it was in the 70s produced by a regime that had effectively seized control back mm -hmm. after all of the reforms of the late 1960s. And in many ways was a very kind of conservative culture that wanted to control the behaviours of people. Mm -hmm. So what did it mean for, um, for that, 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 that culture to uh, issue such kind of vivacious pop music? Should we see it as a kind of critique of control? Or maybe we should see it actually in itself as a form of control? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And um, we can only right now um, invite people for watching the exhibition till uh, 22nd of October. Thank you very much.